Today is University Mental Health Day 2021. The One Fair Project wanted to provide a platform for voices across the UK to have their say on mental health and students. We spoke to over 20 amazing students, advocates, professionals and voices. Hi everyone, my name is Aliyah. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Fatima. Hi, I'm Ella. Hi everyone, my name's Harry. Hi everyone, my name's Bethan. Hi, my name's Eve. Hi, my name is Shannon. Hi, I'm Tamisha Smixon. Mental health advocate and podcaster based in North London. An educational researcher here at One Third, and I'm also a student studying forensic psychology. Apprentice policy and research coordinator. Uh, I'm a teacher myself and I work with trainee teachers as well. I'm from Loughborough Students' Union and I'm the Welfare and Diversity Executive Officer. Um, I'm currently a PhD student at Glasgow Caledonian University. I'm a youth leader on the Recommendation 12 YE 2030 campaign. I'm the Editor-in-Chief and Founder of Disgraceful Magazine and I'm also in my second year of university at the University of Plymouth studying English with Publishing. And to me, mental health is of great importance, even as much as your physical health. The same way that your physical health is the state of your body, your mental health is the state of your mind. When our minds are in a good state, we can move from a place of peace and productivity. But for many of us who may have struggled for mental health, that can really impact on our studies, the way we interact with people, the, the general day-to-day -day tasks that we do, and the way we feel about ourselves. Mental health to me means making sure that I'm looking after my body and my mind making sure that I take regular breaks and take time to focus on something other than work or schoolwork. Mental health means quite a lot to me, but I think as a student right now, um, it means like sort of stress, anxiety. Completely undiagnosed, it can be your general response or it can be towards the more severe end of the spectrum. We can be talking about mental illness and mental health difficulties. When we think about mental health for students, I think the tendency quite often is to think about mental health as two kind of polar opposites, sort of think of bad mental health and good mental health. Um, and I think what's really important is that when we think about it, we consider mental health more as a scale as opposed to kind of two polar opposites. Mental health for me was about um, having a sense of peace with who I was, not struggling to please others, and be what I perceived that others wanted me to be. Mental health is really, really super important to me. Um, it's something that obviously uh, impacts, especially with illnesses and issues. It impacts a lot of young people when they don't seek the right support. Uh, so it's really important to me that I do advocate and campaign for better mental health services and better mental health provision for young people. Mental health is a state of emotional well-being. It's something that affects us every day influencing how we think, feel and act and it's something that needs to be looked after, especially in times of stress. For me, I would personally just throw it back to my own experience where it was actually quite recently, probably from the from Christmas to about now-ish, I would say. Um, I essentially, I don't know if anybody's heard, but I had these things called hives, which are like these awful like lump slash spots and they're really itchy and irritating to your skin and I was honestly covered head to toe and I was frantically trying to find out what was causing it everybody was saying it's an allergic reaction I went to GPs had medication to basically come full circle and figure out that it was to do with me feeling stressed and I think that to me was really significant because I realized that I need to essentially recognize when I'm not okay and it's again it goes back to saying like it's okay not to be okay my first year of uni was a difficult period for me mental health wise. Um, I think mental health kind of took me by surprise. It was the first time I was kind of dealing with that sort of thing. And um, yeah, I was, it's something that kind of takes you in and slowly you sink in and everything becomes a lot more difficult and a lot more dark and everything seems kind of out of reach. I have struggled with mental health for most of my life. Um, I'm autistic but in primary school, I was diagnosed with social anxiety disorder and I have struggled so badly with anxiety for most of my life, especially primarily in social situations. Um, so going to school in itself, being a social situation was very difficult to deal with. Um, I would have such an intense fear of saying or doing the wrong thing um 
and it was just pretty horrible. I can definitely think of a few times I have struggled with my mental health. I would probably say right now is one of those times with the pandemic and the struggles at university and the lack of a safety net I guess during these times it's been increasingly hard. See I'm struggling with my mental health at the moment um, which you'd never see me like when I told my teachers they said to me oh you don't seem like the student who'd suffer from this but actually I do um, and it's pretty tough because obviously like I'm seen on my college like, as this exceptional student um, who's always on time who's always handing in her work but behind screens and behind closed doors, I actually I'm struggling and I'm not getting that support that I need. I think some universities are really trying to support their students. IRU um, has given everybody a week long extension, like a blanket extension for everyone's assignments. Um, and that's for this trimester. And they also offer free counselling and wellbeing to all of their students. Regardless of the subject, regardless of the activity, actually having um, time and space to, to incorporate the topic of mental health into whatever curriculum area is being covered. There must be more done to support students with their mental health, especially now. The way we do university has changed, therefore the way that we access services and run services also must change. You can have support, you can have things that almost improve your mental health by proxy. Um, but not explicitly setting out to do that purpose. One of the key things that I think can be done to help students with their mental health is have a key policy in place to ensure that students know where they can get what help for which difficulty. We know that um, a lot of students struggle with their mental health but very few students disclose that to their universities and so what that means ultimately is that students are going to reach out to their peers for support. So I think in terms of supporting students authentically um, obviously there needs to be a cultural change around mental health challenging mental health stigma making it okay for people to say that they're not okay but I think in terms of what the university can do I think it's really refining their welfare system so making sure that there are kind of that there are clear roles and clear kind of people that students can go to I think even in terms of making sure that there are enough welfare counsellors and people that students can go to. That's why the most and uh, most important thing that universities can do is give, is give proper funding and support to mental health services. And these mental health services need to be intersectional. They need to provide services particularly for BAME people, for women that may have faced different, different difficulties to other groups. Um, we would advise um, young people to use their voice and speak up for them to know that they're not alone in this situation, that somebody is out there waiting to be of help to you. So many old men also that there are charities like One Third who are there to help with things such as mental health. And there are so many different online websites and resources uh, and free online courses that are there to help you deal with your, with your mental health. Give yourself rest, allow yourself to rest, don't keep yourself awake. If you don't rest, your body will do it for you. And I mean that in the most serious way. If you don't rest, your body will drop, like you'll just fall asleep. Um, and stay hydrated, stay moisturised. Don't worry, you've got this. And look after yourself first. You would come before everything else. Whether it be with friends, family, counselling services, speaking up is one of the most courageous things you probably will ever do. Studying at home, it's really easy to let education and studying consume all of your time and we start to forget and lose touch with all of the little things that we used to enjoy around it. And we also seem to have this focus now that we are either having a productive day or a rest day and it at the same time seems to be very easy to feel like you've done neither. So focus on making your downtime your downtime and your study time your study time. Take a break and do something else and do something you enjoy and help yourself rediscover why you started studying what you're studying in the first place. Zoom calls um, and like to try to keep up with your friends and your family and like FaceTimes or whatever you can do. But be warned, you can get Zoom fatigue from that. Fill, fill your time with things you enjoy, not just studying. So um, obviously you need to study and, and, and do study where and when you can. But 
spend time speaking with your friends and family, um, even if it's FaceTime, phone call, even a text message. No one else has done this before. No one else has been in this position. Like you guys are battling a pandemic whilst also trying to get a degree. That is hard. And no one else has had to do that before. So just give yourselves a massive pat on the back and forgive yourselves and just be proud that you are doing something that no one else has had to do before. Talk to your tutor, even if it's just for a chat or it's about your work, just ask for some time with them, have a chat with them. I trust, I think it really helps. It's what I did. Plan ahead, planning even for a whole day of what you're gonna do at different times. Just keep that momentum going. Don't think of it as, oh, I got this grade, you know, it really does suck to be me or whatever. Think of it as like development. Think of it as, you know, this was what I got, but I can do better. Speak to your teacher and get that support. Um, and just don't base your self-worth on academic validation. If you need to pray, if you need to meditate, really take that time to really sit, just be still, be quiet. Um, have moments of, of quiet and thoughtfulness with yourself and really start to train and, and speak to your mind. And have a mentor, somebody who you can communicate with, somebody that can be of support to you and of guidance to you. You matter and your mental health matters uh, more than any academic achievements. Um, and you'll be grateful for this in the future if you prioritise it now. Get up, get out, get socialising and remember that work is never the be all and end all. A huge thank you to everyone who got involved with this project. Thank you all for voicing your experiences and for supporting students across the country. To find out what the One Third Project can do to support you or a student you know, head over to our website at www.onethirdproject.co.uk or you can find us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. For any further inquiries, you can send us an email at hello at one third project dot co dot uk